talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. Yes, I'm here to strain with you, men. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fita Show with your host, Joe Miller. Joe always sounds so cool when he says that. But today, ladies and gentlemen, you have a special guest host, and it's your boy, Jason. Uh, and I have this when every Buffalo Run has network brought to you. Feature such flavorful people today. We are both uh, shipping nationwide at Picasso.net. What's going on, Mr. Hey, hey, Jay. Jay Spence the King. Thanks for sitting in, man. Uh, we're breaking up a little bit there. Anybody in the comments section, if we're breaking up. Yep, Tracy Fitcher says we're breaking up. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's on my end or not. Uh, Is it in the comments? Let's know if it's, if, it's, if it's John. Get this right. That way it's... Yeah, who's breaking up? Is it me what? or Spence? Me or Spence? Me or Spence? All right. Well, you're frozen. You look great, frozen man. I'm frozen? Huh? Yeah. You're like uh, my. I'm okay. Spence is breaking up. All right. What's well, up? Uh, reset my whole thing real quick. Why don't you uh, off and talk? But just your experience. Then I'll jump. All right. Well, I got to tell you, everybody in the comments, everybody who uh, not in the comments, man, it was a great weekend. I flew out here to Buffalo, catch up with everybody, came in on the red eye, and I, I do this to myself every time. I just overbook myself. I think I build in a little downtime, but it's never there, Spence. I'm just going and going and going. So I got in at 5 a.m., grabbed some breakfast. Uh, they let me have some early check-in, and then I just went from place to place, man, because I, I just... I just soak it up. Uh, I'm, you know, the city of Buffalo, that's my town. And then in the uh, early evening, uh, I, I had some people over to pour over on Pearl Street just to catch up with some of these wonderful Bills Mafia people that I engage with and, and love so much, like the entire community of Buffalo. And, and then went to a Halloween party with uh, Josh Allen's parents. So I got to hang out with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, and Jim Kelly came by. It was it was pretty damn cool. Uh, so, and then, man, I got home late, tried to watch some of the UCLA games, see my son play. Could hardly stay up till 1.30 in the morning, and then it's like lather, rinse, repeat. Game day, tailgating. Anyway, we'll get into that, but, you know, we got to we gotta give our props to uh, Mr. Spazcheck, the market dominator. So he's the sponsor of the show, title sponsor. Spence, you're coming in clear. Can you roll him up? Blue 21 set up. Oh, oh, hey guys, hey guys, I'm not Josh. I'm John Spasjack, the market dominator, the proud sponsor of the John Phoenix Show, hosted by the voice Joe Miller. And folks, the great thing about why we love our quarterback, not only is he awesome, but here's the reasons why. He's super disciplined, he's an incredible hard worker. He actually is very intelligent, and he has a ton of focus. These are some of the qualities that my good man John Fina used on the field to help the Bills get to Super Bowls so many years ago. But now, in real estate, I'm the guy who helps you win. This is what we do. We educate, we advocate, we negotiate, and we dominate. So if you want to win in this market, you call me, 716-570-3298. Go! Let's go, Buffalo! Man, I love that guy, and it is a tough market. So if you want a real pro, somebody who's tough, just like the market is, give John Spazchick a call. You saw his number in there. Reach out, say hello, 
and uh, he'll help you out, find the house of your dreams, and and guide you and work with you, man. He's a great dude. I love him, man, and and energy. It just makes like I feel like he should he should uh, lead the charge one day on a Sunday. Yeah, I feel like he would yeah. get the whole stadium amped up, man. <laughs> yeah, you might have to have you know market dominator up in the uh, stadium somewhere, right? That that wouldn't be cheap, I'm sure. Right next to uh, yeah. you know the market dominators high mark stadium. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Well, let's see who all we have in the comments here. We have Daniel. Daniel's always in the house. Shout out to Daniel. Uh, we got my homegirl Tracy in here joining us tonight. Uh, I think I saw my favorite person, Mimi. Yep, Mimi Fina's here. She said you're Mimi good Fina. for her with the sound. Uh, Karen is here. and uh, There's so many people. Uh, I don't think Antonio's here, but Antonio left this comment at 1.56 p.m. Eastern time. So I just had to shout him out. Thank you, Antonio, for tuning in and for for wanting to be uh, hanging out with us tonight. Pam is here. She's on time. Pam is on time. Ah, how nice. You know, I got to uh, got to meet Richard Rush. He didn't mention his name, but, you know, he's been uh, he's been in all the shows and just a super great guy. I got to meet he and his wife, drove up from Ohio, and, and Tracy, of course, Pam and Dan. And, yeah, man, it's just such a great community. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, and, and getting yeah. a chance to, to show up and say hello and put – put uh you know live action faces to names that you see on twitter you know it's yeah. it's terrific and then uh, it was great i was walking out of the game and you're always looking for people that you see you know you're doing the celebration as you're walking out after a win and man ran right into richard and his wife again so thanks hey, for joining us richard, man. i love his beard his beard is like it, it's um it's immaculate like i don't feel like i, I could never reach that level of beard so you know, shout out to him and everybody else in the room. Happy Halloween to everybody. Um, John, the game. I know I know there was a party at the Mafia House. You know, you want to talk about that first really quickly? Because I feel like it was such a great time there. I didn't get a chance to stop by, but I saw all the pictures. I saw videos. I, I heard so many stories. Uh, why don't you fill us in about kind of what happened over there? Oh, well, first of all, I had a couple from Las Vegas with me and a couple from Phoenix. Uh, the Phoenix couple's from Kenmore and Rochester and the Vegas couple, this is a great story. The guy just, when he was in junior high school, wanted to pick a winner, right? So he's been a Bills fan his whole life. And I bumped into him in Las Vegas and said, eh, well, you've been to a game? He said, well, not yet. I tried to get to one and there were some circumstances, it's a long story, but I'm going to the Packers game. Oh, no kidding. I'm leaving from Vegas on the red eye. He says, I'm leaving from the red eye on Vegas. So just meet this guy, just gravitate with him, bring him out to breakfast. And uh, he and his wife, they had a great time. So, you know, we, we saddled up, we got ready, and we went down to the tailgate. I think we got there around 2.30, and it was already just jam-packed, man. It was, it was live. People were going nuts already. We took them over to uh, uh, Iman and Q42's um, tailgate introduced them to everybody just gave them just saturated them with what it's like you know they've been dying you watch a game on tv but you hear about all the tailgates and and all the people and all the food and the fun and then we ended up at the bills mafia house and everybody was just so warm and welcoming and you know we took tons of photos i realized like i was there for about three hours spence and i was like man i haven't eaten anything i'm so hungry but i was just so busy talking to everybody and visiting it was it was a it was fantastic yeah, um man. We had DJ going, and, man, I can't remember his name, but there's a guy who has, uh, shoot, uh, maybe you know his name. He's a rapper, and he has. Dom Brown. A, what? Dom Brown. Yes, Dom. That's right. Yeah, shout out to Dom Brown, man. He he does great things. He has some great music, and not just what, like, every year he drops new music, and, you know, it's a party over there, man. It's a, it's, yeah. Shout out to Dom Brown. Yeah, we got to get him on the show one of these days. Hey, and uh, Barbecue Freddy, Buffalo Freddy. Yes, Man, sir. the food, oh, it wasn't like you go to a, you know, tailgate and you're having chips and onion dip. Man, it was full-blown. I finally got over there. I ate my weight in nachos, dude. <laughs> There's queso coming out of my ears. It was it was so cool. And then um, and then it was just uh, like all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, we got to get to the stadium. And people just start migrating out of the tailgate. And you don't get a chance to talk to everybody. And you don't get a chance to say goodbye to everybody. But, you know, I did my best and made my rounds around. And to a person, you know, maybe they're bad online or maybe they're great online. But in person, man, everybody it was pretty damn cool. Really, really great feeling. Justice was there. Um, yeah. Just 
it was great. It was so cool. I got a chance to see Justice, and but I can relate completely to what you're saying. It's like when you get when you finally get a chance to go back home for one of it's like, you know, there's so many people that you want to catch up with. There's so many people you want to see. So, unfortunately, this time I didn't get a chance to party with everybody over at the Mafia House. But there was, like, so many other parties on the other side of it. I didn't even get a chance to make it to the Mafia House. But Oh, listen, I know. Man, I, had to, I was supposed to go to two more tailgates. But you just mm-hmm. get parked and, and the time just flies by, you know. It happens. It was awesome. It happens. Yeah, so let's, well, let's you, and I, you and I will get together in Phoenix, though. we got to do that soon. It's been too long, my brother. Been yeah, too it has. long. It has. We have to uh, get together for lunch or dinner or something like that and, and just catch on up. But let's get into this game. Let's. Get, um, so first, what are your thoughts on the game? We The Buffalo Bills defeated the Green Bay Packers 27-17 to at home. We didn't quite cover the spread. I was a little disappointed <laughs> we didn't quite cover the spread. But no, we were very close to doing it. Yeah, the spread was a big subject of uh, conversation in the suite. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, no. And I solved that by never gambling on football. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, And as far as I'm concerned, we covered the spread, right? We got the W, so that's all that counts. Uh, Look, I think, um, you know, we look at this team and the pieces that Bean and McDermott have put together, and we just get the, we like, we identify or adopt the sense of invincibility and th- that no one can stand in front of us, you know, aside from a fluke game in Miami, which I do feel was a fluke. And, you know, expectations go up, and, and I'm a victim of that too, because I'm a huge fan. Um, so, I think my my thoughts on the game were I'm really happy. And that might sound silly, right, because this, the second half was lackluster. But without adversity, you know, coming from time to time, without a poor performance by one or two people or some poor tackling or some, you know, some schemes that are off, it's hard to tighten the screws, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a wake-up call, and it was a free one because it comes with a W. So my thoughts on the game were, hey, we got out with a W, but you know we got our we got work to do, you know. So you refocus. You you know you're a six and one football team, but it wasn't pretty. And although it shows up six and one in the columns like that, as a player, you just reinvest. You know when it's too easy, too long, and I'm not saying it's easy because all games are hard, but when it looks easy and feels easy. You tend, you, I don't say you lose the edge, but you have to manufacture it. So a little bit of a wake-up call uh, manufactures it for you. How about you, man? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, so I agree, I agree with most of what you're saying. But then I look at it from a different perspective. I don't, I don't feel that it was even a wake-up call. I don't think that we performed as badly as a lot of people want to, uh, to put. I think that we've, we've kind of we've gotten spoiled as a fan base. Um, I watched the game back a couple times today. I actually watched it twice. And um, I think, obviously, the, the two turnovers by Josh were not good, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, those were bad decisions on his part. But when you when you watch the game, I feel like the defense still played well. I think it was somewhat of the game plan to – I don't want to say let them run over us, but I think it was somewhat of a game plan. Like, look, if Aaron Rodgers is going to be Aaron Rodgers and they're going to put the ball in his hand, we're going to make them suffer. And I think the team expected that, and because of that – in the second half, the run kind of, but they didn't put up points. So mm. I, I don't, I don't see it as, you know, like they played horribly. I look at it as, you know, you do what you do to win the game. And a lot of times, you know, depending on who you're playing, you're either going to do the bend or break or, you know, bend, bend but don't break, or you're going to do, let's go out and dominate this team, depending on the competition. And with Aaron Rodgers, you don't, you don't go out there and typically expect to dominate when he's on the other side of the fo- the field. Too so true, too I was true. actually really happy with the game. Um, you know, of course, you want to score points. I get it. But I was actually very happy with the game. Well, yeah, I agree with you. Um, but I think, you know, if I were to kind of micro it out, you know, flatten it out a little bit, I'd say their running attack was good. And, and, and it it was really good. And that's that. That's the part where I'm saying that gives you back the edge. You know, the defense is regrouping, saying, "Wow, they had some nice plays in the heart of our defensive line," and then and then they did that quick toss thing and got out onto the edge. Yeah. You know, trying to press those young corners and see what kind of help came up from the safety. Make Tremaine, make Matt Milano. You know, run the width of the field, and uh, you know, like we said, we bent, we didn't break, we didn't give up too many points. 
But in the end, when you're watching that film as a player from the player's perspective, man, those eight, nine, 10, 12 yard runs, are, they just, you know, the coach rewinds them and you just start to do this, you know, you're all fidgety, like, oh man, I don't want to look at that. And then the more you say you don't want to look at it, the harder you look at it. And you're saying, how could I have done that a little bit better? Did I pick a side? Should I have maintained the gap position that I had? And, um, you know, I think that's, um, I, I, like I said, you know, it's a freebie. You got the W, but there's a few things you can do better. Yeah, no, and I agree. Like you said, if you if you get down into it, then obviously the run um, the run defense it it was almost scary if you want to break it down to that point because it's reminiscent of what last year's defense was, and we were, you know, the number one overall defense. But I felt like last year that weakness. If if the team could run the football, that made me nervous. So so yeah, I could see that. And another thing I will say. Um, I'm still I'm still quite not sold, man, and I've been trying to be sold more and more every week. I'm not I don't think I'm sold on Isaiah McKenzie and the offense or on special teams. You know, I think I think his decision making really makes me question the weapon that he can be for Josh. Like the one play, um, he literally he almost lost 15 yards trying to reverse the field, um, and he ended up I think he only lost like four or five. But you know, there's certain things just decision making, man. You you can't give up those type of yards on those plays. Uh, how do you feel about Isaiah McKenzie's performance? So, you know, I went back and specifically looked at that play. And um, it, it's curious, when you take a guy who's not a running back and you put him into the type of play that was, which was just power. So we're pulling the backside guard. Um, Bates pulls. And the defensive end, the the, the the design of the play was Devin Singletary goes wide and you stretch the end and then the guard is going to lead up into the hole and not kick the guy out. And it worked. Everything was perfect. But the problem you get when you have a wide receiver acting like a running back is they don't like to get too close to those piles, those big guys, right? So the hole was there. He just didn't make the cut. And, uh, you know, I think – it's a teaching film. It's a good play. I love expanding the defensive end like that with the running back. Um, but then even staying on running backs, you know, just looking at both Devin Singletary and Cook, but more Singletary, the, the plays that didn't work well for him, you know, when – I'm of course, I was never a running back, right? I mean, right, right. shoot, I'd have to fall out of a plane to be fast enough to be a running back. So I don't he, know. Um, I, got a, I got a picture <laughs> of you. I'm just saying, I got a picture of you. With the ball, it looks like, you know, I, I don't know. It just looks like you were, you were like <laughs> Reggie Gilliam out there, man. I'm just saying. It, it's deceptive, man. It looked like I was moving fast, but it, it was really slow-mo in real life. But anyway, my, my point of that was a couple of the runs by Singletary, the, I always hear the offensive line or offensive the running backs coaches saying, you know, press the hole, press the hole. And on the ones where he didn't, he didn't make many yards – he gave up on it too soon. Like, you know, you design a run for a hole, and if there's an inkling of the opening, you got to press that hole and hit it. So in a couple of instances, he saw it. it might have been closing a little bit or not as big as he'd like. He cut it back right into the teeth of the guys on the backside. So I think, he, you know, in this league, with the quality of guys that play defensive tackle and end, you know, if, if there's something there at the hole, you got to press the hole. And yeah. uh, but by and large, I mean, I thought I think our running backs were explosive, especially in the first half. And, you know, those I thought the running attack looked pretty good. What about you? I tell you what, um, first, I, I'm a huge fan of Devin Singletary getting the ball more. I love mm -hmm. what the Buffalo Bills are doing the last two games. Absolutely love it. But I'm also look, I'm really impressed with James Cook. Um, I know, like he, yesterday, we got a chance to see exactly what the Buffalo mm -hmm. Bills drafted him for. The one yep. reception, I believe it was the third quarter, where or it may have been early fourth, but he, he caught the ball and yes. ran it for like 30-something yards. That is exactly why the Buffalo Bills drafted him, that run-after-the-catch ability or yak or whatever acronyms we want to use today. That That's why we drafted him. And I tell you what, I, I think he's coming into his own. He's getting more comfortable. And if it gets to that point, you know, I know I know the Bills have been linked with, um, you know, trying to trade for Alvin Kamara. They were trade. They were linked with uh, Kareem Hunt and a couple other running backs around the league. I tell you what, if, if James Cook is is ready, the NFL might want to look out because if he yeah. if he can add that element to our offense, it's going to be really scary for anybody. It's already scary to face Josh. But but now you get a running back that can hit the holes kind of like you're talking about with Isaiah McKenzie. McKenzie it could be scary. 
I, I think, you know, you referenced that reception that he had where he was flying in or flying in. He was crossing behind the first level, second level defenders. But the, the really, I think, my opinion, the really grown up and mature aspect of what he did was unlike in college, you don't expect every second level defender to be able to elevate and tip a ball or make a pick. He recognized or felt it. And as he was crossing, he continued to, to give up a little ground, get some depth, just like on that little flick pass mm -hmm. that Josh threw to Knox. If you go back and look at that, Knox sees that, you know, Josh is running toward the end zone. And if he stays right there, he's covered. All he did was back up four yards and he's wide mm -hmm. open. So uh, I'm really impressed by Cook doing that. I don't know if that's coaching or instinct, but it was terrific. And then he had that nice run onto the right side. It wasn't much of a hole. He got a quick grab on the jersey, broke through that, and then what really impressed me was the acceleration. So I'm, he I'm... also he also had one on the left too, another run on the mm -hmm. left where he he, um, he made a couple guys miss right behind the line of scrimmage and then broke it out, caught, got a first down for it. So again, like I know it is it's slow motion. Like we wanted to see him come out week one and be the like, oh, we drafted this guy early. He should be great. It's, it's taking some time, but I think everything that I'm seeing from him, man. I love Devin. I would love to see a guy with the explosiveness of James Cook be able to really get snaps in his offense. So, you know, I'm a little conf confused as to why. Um, you know, let me get your opinion on this because so they they did as far as the running backs. We also had uh, Zach Moss active. A lot of people that I was seeing kind of complained about the fact that we didn't have Isaiah Hodgins active because we didn't have the space. Uh, last week or two weeks ago against the Chiefs, we didn't have Moss active. Do you think um, just the way we're seeing how the offense is going, because he didn't even get a snap or an offensive, you know, he didn't carry the ball one time. How do you think that's going to go going forward? Well, I think that this staff has made it pretty clear that you are earning your spot week in and week out. Um, and I, I like the idea of having three running backs up because, you know, I think there's still competition there. So the first two guys are having success. You're not going to see Moss, right? And I get it. You know, you've only got a certain number of guys that you can put up for the game. So you got to make those decisions and, you know, they're, they're above my head, right? Maybe some of them are based on the abilities of the D line and the linebackers, you know, their speed, their abilities to change direction. And you choose, you know, all right, we're going to go three running backs instead of, you know, an extra wide receiver. And if you're thinking about the emphasis on the running game, which appeared to be the case, you know, you, you certainly don't want uh, one and two on the sideline for some injury and not have a third one to go to. So if that's your emphasis for the week, you have a stable of running backs. If you're going to go four wides, you know, Zach or Cook is probably in street clothes. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the philosophy that they set up. Going okay, sticking with this. I, I I picked up on this, you know, it's hard to see from the stadium. But what I thought was really cool is the way they use Bobby Hart. I don't know if you noticed this, yes. but traditionally when you bring an offensive tackle in to to put up a heavy set, you line him up next to the other tackle. So your guard, tackle, tackle, right? Mm -hmm. But what they did is they went guard, tackle, knocks on the line, mm -hmm. and Bobby Hart was at the wing position. So I thought that was kind of cool because when I looked at some of the failures of our running games that have been outside of a very simple set with one tight end and having a bunch of, you know, bunch bunch receivers over here or over here, we tend to lose those plays based on you're asking wide receivers to block. And you know, they're not terribly good at it, just like I can't run around and catch a ball. So swapping those two out, you got Bobby Hart in position to take that, that more immediate threat. And you have Dawson Knox working with the tackle two on one and then disengaging and moving up to the next level. I thought that was just really cool to see. You don't see that much. I, I don't, no, I don't you know, know that I've seen it before. Well, I was actually impressed with that as well because um, I was one of the things that first came to mind when I saw it was, you know, if you if you've watched the Raiders at all this year, uh, the last not yesterday he didn't have the best day, but but Josh Jacobs has been having a really good season because they've added additional guys on the line like that. So I was thinking, a, you know, yeah, help your running backs out, help them kind of get that leverage if you're going to focus on the run. But then, like you said, I also look at that as because they did it the way he. He had to 
I feel like he had to report as as a receiver or as an eligible receiver. And I think that also took away from a couple of things where we've been seeing with the Raiders. Guys have been called back. Plays have been called back for, you know, guys being down the field too early or something like that. So even just the the little nuances or or catching those details, I think that helps a lot. And I was just I was super impressed with that. One more thing about the run game and then we can kind of go on. Jedediah here says, um, I love our running backs. Glad to see them being utilized more. Why not Gilliam and goal line? Man, I, I, I guess I have to answer that. And I, I hate answering questions like this because it just goes back to the stuff that I wish I was a part of. That game planning, the philosophy, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Gilliam was on the field a couple times. Um, we have shown multiple packages. We, we utilized Gilliam about four weeks ago in the run game and in the passing game extensively. And then it kind of got mothballed. And I don't know. I don't know the philosophy. Like, I would like to crawl into their heads. I'd like to say to Dorsey, like, why? Um, and, and I think bringing him in and having him on the field, at the very least, you know, gets him kind of acclimated again. You spend too much time on the sideline, you come onto the field, it's like, you know, sitting out for three quarters, and then you get ahead, and then somebody goes in, you know. Um, so it, it's an available package for him. It's an effective package for him. And I think that seeing him out there now means that we might see a little bit more of him. And I got to be honest with you, uh, this year I'm far more impressed with his play than I was last year. Uh, just by when I look at him, he's on the he's making the right calls as far as you know, block the guy you're supposed to block, do your job, and do it well. Well, and and. I agree with what you said earlier, but you made a different point, but you were talking about the game planning and, and if you're going to focus on run and this, I think what we've seen, because we early in the season, we've seen him really be used as a weapon in the offense. So I think, I think the team has a plan for Reggie Gilliam. We've seen him catch passes that most fullbacks in the league don't make. We've right. seen him, you know, so I, and, and then this year he's been finishing blocks with violence. Like every time I've seen him finish a block, he's been like throwing guys through the ground. So, I think it's one of those things where, you know, I, like you mentioned, this game, I just think it, it just came down to the fact that the game plan was to get, you know, the running game going and, and to try to just move the ball a little more methodically. Even though they took some big chunk plays, I just think it was just the way they wanted to, to run the game plan. So uh, good question there. Good question there. So let's um, – before we – go on to the next topic do want to take a moment and look at one of our sponsors again we got some house capital corp going on so uh john talk to me a little bit about house capital i absolutely will but before that i'll say that uh, brian belser was gracious enough to invite me into his uh, suite for the game me and two of my friends thank you brian uh just as nice as i had hoped he would be super cool guy so brian Appreciate it, man. Uh, you bailed me out, and I had a great time hanging out with you and your people. But for getting down to business, when you're looking to buy a house, everybody has a guy. You might need work done in your roof. Eh, you know, your buddy's got a guy. Need an inspection? I know someone. And when you're looking to get your financing together, there's no one other than Brian Belser from House Capital Corporation because he is the guy. Let him be your guy. They help make the mortgage process simple, hassle-free, understandable at house capital their preferred relationships with some of the top lenders give you the edge up in getting the financing that you need take it to the house with house capital all right brian belser house capital don't be afraid (laughs) well so i know we kind of already talked about the good i feel like too so let's Mm -hmm. um let's let's kind of talk about what we feel like needs work before we head into next week so um if if I can kind of start off by by kind of steering you where I feel like I want to go with it, yeah, um, that's fine. I can take direction. I, well, I feel like for me the biggest the biggest complaint that I have, and and I'll probably sound like you know old you know like an old guy on this one because I, I understand that the team likes to let guys be themselves and have personality and all this stuff. I think my biggest takeaway wasn't the run game that everybody's been complaining about today. It wasn't um, the, the two interceptions by Josh Allen. Honestly, it was the the fact that they allowed these guys to really get in their heads, and I know that um, we didn't we didn't get penalized for it not this time, but easily Diggs could have gotten a penalty for um, any type of taunting or any type of unsportsmanlike conduct. Actually, we did get one with Gabriel Davis. He got a, a yeah, 50 the, yard penalty that for little uh, the bump in the back. Yeah. Yep. 
So, so for me, it's as a as a championship team. If that's what we want to be, we want to be a Super Bowl team. Guys are going to try to get in your head, and I, and and again, I understand that Diggs is he's Diggs. I love it. I love the, I love the energy. Job dog like that. So I love the energy. But when it comes to it, if you're winning the game, or even not the game, you don't want to give the other team any a momentum or b the chance to kill your momentum. Right. So um, as as a former player yourself, I'm sure you've been in situations where like Bruce's body slammed somebody wrong or something like that. What do you what are your thoughts on, you know, keeping your cool in games like this? Well, first, you know, God, I mean, I have so many thoughts about this. I I think that the rules are just ridiculous for celebration and you know, I, I think it takes some of the flair and the emotion out of the game. I think it's you know, 98% harmless. So I, I don't like the way they govern the game in that regard, but given that the rules are what they are, you know, this team has historically, since McDermott and Bean have been here, uh, very clean and haven't had those lapses. So, you know, to get, again, I mean, you know, they got it out a little bit. They'll talk about it because I agree with you. It was apparent, um, you know, just, Clean it up. You're going to get fined, first of all. You're going to, they're going to take money out of your pocket uh, if they can, whatever, whatever the team rules are, league rules are. So it, it looked a little bit about like it, you know, and it might be a little bit of the world beater attitude that, that they've been that, you know, what, why are we letting these guys hang around a little bit? But it's certainly, it, it, will, it would definitely bite us. You don't, we don't want that to happen in a, in a three-point game against Kansas City. So I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. That that needs work. That needs to be talked about and reviewed. Um, and, you know, there were instances back in the days when, you know, a coach would come, pull you aside and have, have a private one with you and mm -hmm. remind you that this is – when we when we showed up at training camp, we talked about our goals, win the East, win the conference, win the Super Bowl. And you just got to keep reminding people, go, go back to why you're here. And what you did, does that help us get toward our goals or does it prevent us from getting our goals? And, you know, I think it's probably a one-off knowing this staff. I, I, told, I don't know if I told you or anybody out there, but I, I got the opportunity to meet uh, McDermott and Bean on Saturday after walkthrough. Lucky and dog. You lucky dog. Man, I, I, <laughs> honestly, I talked to each of them for about 15 minutes. And they're like, you know, you're, you just, the intensity and the, it just exudes from them and you just soak it up. You, I mean, you know, I know it's a, it's a cliche, but man, I would have been running through walls for those guys. So I, I know they'll take that seriously. No. And, and I get that even, even in the interviews where I feel like coach McDermott is trying to kind of be reserved and, and hold that stuff back. You can still, you can still see it. You can feel that passion jumping off the screen. Uh, shout out to Pam, the lovely, most beautiful Pam. She, with the super chat, she says, saw someone say that the team kind of fell out a bit in the second half and Josh was trying too hard to make up for it. Um, I, 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 I mean, I, I think I agree. Not, not so much with um, Josh making up for it. I think Josh was being Josh, but I do think that the team, like we were talking about, kind of just has some moments there of, of judgment that laps that I don't feel like we are typically like, well, I think Diggs is always passionate like that. Like even last year mm -hmm. in new England, when he was talking to the fans and was like, you, 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 I'm not going to repeat what he said here, but you know, he's Diggs was, he's always passionate and we always see him on the sideline saying I'm him. They can't mess with me. They can't do this. I love that energy. I just don't want penalty. But how do you feel about Pam's comment here? Well, to be fair to Pam, because I like Pam. Hello, Pam. Uh, it's not her comment, right? So uh, I'm going to disagree with the person that said Josh was trying too hard because that's all Josh does is try hard. And in this game, at the speed that it moves and the invariability of expectation of where a guy's going to be a millisecond from now, that's, that's what we love about the guy. So it's not him trying hard. It's like what you said. It's Josh being Josh. It's, unfortunately luck counts and sometimes you're on the wrong you're on the ass end of trying too hard <laughs> it just don't work um but opposite of that we don't want that either 
you know, this guy with these tools and these this skill set who's who's made his reputation being the guy who's going to extend a play and do something cool and lower his shoulder and make it happen and get the crowd and the team. I mean, we don't want the other guy, the guy who's afraid to do that. So it just might not look pretty sometimes, but it's still going to be him. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. Sometimes luck does count, and it doesn't, or it always counts, and it sometimes it's not on our side. But the good thing about it is yesterday, it, it matter. You know, like we were – the thing that I was most impressed about is if we're all talking about how sloppy the game was or whatever mental laps and all these different things, we still won points against a guy who's the two time defending MVP. Now, mm-hmm. whether you're going to say, um, you know, well, he doesn't have Devonte Adams, so he doesn't have the same receivers. OK, if you're going to say whatever, whatever excuse you want to give, the fact is we still beat the two time defending MVP by 10. points. So, you know, as much as we're complaining, man, I'm I'm. I'm good on it. Hey, you you can only play against the guys that show up. And they're sad that they don't have Devontae anymore, right? So they got to figure that out themselves. And one thing I'll – you lower your expectation of what your opponent is going to bring to you, that's when you get exposed. And I don't think we did it. We bent. We didn't break. But, you know, uh, he's a scary fella. And if he doesn't have his weapons, then he needs to get back into the uh, the crayons and the paper and come up with another plan. But it ain't going to be against us. Yeah, well, one more. Okay, so one more thing I want to – so work is not the same sense of the question, but I'm going to ask you about this because uh, we saw, obviously, early in the season, Micah Hyde went down. So we don't have him for the rest of the year. Jordan Poyer scared us all yesterday. He said he heard a pop. Um and I don't know what happened, but he heard a pop. He re-injured his elbow. There's a possibility. We haven't heard yet, but there could be a possibility that he may miss time. The trade deadline is tomorrow. What do you mm. do? You do you see us looking for possible safety? Do you still think that the Buffalo Bills are probably in the market for another running back? Or you know what? What do you? Because it could be sca- now. We're not facing teams that I'm absolutely afraid of passing game. I don't think Zach Wilson. He doesn't scare me. You know, but. Um, you know what do you, what do you think is going what what does the team need to work on as far as the overall roster now going forward that that's a really good question i don't share the opinion on running back frankly i think we got our guys that doesn't concern me uh you know being down like a hide and then jordan i don't even know what he needs his elbow for i mean can't we just put a cast on that thing i mean the guy's tough as nails he'd, he'd figure it out so whether he's out for a week or not at all or 3 weeks um the depth at that position doesn't bother me. It's the number of guys that bother me, right? So it might be prudent to sign somebody. That's what I'm going to say to that. So, look, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they picked up a secondary guy. Saying that, uh, you know, I don't uh, – I, I, I do, but I don't. I mean, I don't I, – I can't really see always exactly what the, the secondary philosophy is. But as plays go, and I rewind, and I'm saying, oh, what's that guy doing? Where's Hamlin, right? You know, who's, who's supposed to be showing up here? Johnson, what's going on? I'm impressed. And I think they've been resourceful, and they've been smart about the scheming and putting guys in the right position. So you, I think the guys on the field are, are the good guys, the right guys. But if you want depth with experience, then that's not a bad signing. But And then I don't see any other – position group that we'd want to entertain at this point and 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 to what we were saying earlier is you know Dawson Knox is back Tremaine seems to be doing okay Jordan Phillips looked pretty good I you know I think the hamstring is nearly fully back uh minus Spencer Brown I think the offensive line is playing okay to good and Quesenberry played pretty darn well last night at minus you know everybody has challenges right because the other guy has a pulse so I, I would be okay with that I think that's the spot. If you're going to do it and you're you're concerned going forward, that's probably the position that needs to be entertained. All right. Well, let's um let's move on. We got a game coming up next weekend that I don't think uh, I'm not worried about. I probably <laughs> shouldn't have this. I, I probably shouldn't have this way of thinking because last year we went up against the Jaguars and everybody felt like this about the Jaguars. But I, before we get there, I'm gonna just tell you, I feel like. 
barbecue chicken next weekend. I feel like we about to cook and eat these boys up. Yep. I agree, man. I agree. And if you are going to cook up some barbecue chicken, go the way I go with Q42, barbecue sauce and rubs. I got to tell you, uh, go to Twitter and go at the Emon. That's T-H-E-E-A-M-O-N. Uh, he's a great guy. I stopped by his tailgate yesterday, and he had pulled a brisket off, and we had to run. But I was looking at that brisket, saying, "Forget everybody else. I I I got to stay here." But listen, he does a KC sauce. It's sweet and tangy with a touch of heat, made with local honey. You're gonna love it. It's all great ingredients. And I, I I'm a Carolina mustard guy too, half the time because I I became familiar with it. And if you don't like, if you haven't tried Carolina. Mustard barbecue. I'm drooling. Sorry. It's got a bold vinegar sweetness from the same local honey. You got to give it a shot, man. Listen, go to Q42BBQ.com. Put the code FINA show in all caps. Use that coupon code and you get 15% off your offer and go to the damn tailgate and just take a look at what Iman does. Go to his Twitter page and go to his uh, Instagram and just look what he can do to food. And you're going to be like, I'm in. Q42. Yeah. Go to the damn tailgate, man. I got to You know what? I leave out. I leave out about tomorrow. I got to try to see if I can find a way to get some of that before I head out. If not, next time I come, it's a, it's an absolute must. I'm gonna do that. So, but like I said, so next week or this weekend now, um, the Buffalo Bills open as massive favorites this weekend. Last weekend we were uh, the open was eight and a half, and then it crept up to about eleven and a half for Green Bay. The Bills open at twelve and a half. Uh, as far as the spread when it comes to the Jets. What are your expectations for this weekend coming up? What are we what are we gonna see when the Buffalo Bills head out to New Jersey to go face the Jets? Well I don't think that New York is a particularly hard place to play play, you know, because of the fans. You know, they're not in it to the end by and large like uh Bills fans are. Um so I, I'm not so concerned about the location of the game. You know, going there, it's a short flight uh, I, th- I think the guys are going to be ready. I love this little bit of adversity after the last game going in. The Jets, of course, will be on edge because they just they just gave it up to the Patriots, right? Um, they have a lot of young talent. I'm not convinced about the quarterback, but they got young talent. And I think it's one of those things. You know, when I was when I was in college, I had a coach where you know. I don't know if anybody's experienced this, but you go in the locker room at halftime, you're up by 21, and people say, it's zero to zero, it's zero to zero, go out there like it's zero to zero. I had another coach who said, it's not zero to zero. You'll never convince yourself that. It's 21 to nothing. Now go out there and bury them, mm-hmm. right? So I think the Bills are going to have that attitude. And I'm, I am I, I call it as a W. Um, it certainly won't – no game is easy. And we won't have our, you know, we won't be without our setbacks. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you respectfully. I, I don't think it's I, maybe easy is the wrong word because it's football and it's a professional sport and that team is professional as well. But I just don't think so. So they're dynamic. First of all, I thought, I thought Hall was going to be the rookie of the year. Like I got, you know, the way he was going prior yeah. to his ACL tear, I thought that yeah. guy was going to be easily. And then on the other side, they have a very good rookie at cornerback. Um, with with Sauce Gardner, so so they have some pieces, but mm-hmm. there's nothing about Zach Wilson that makes me think he can hang with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, and like they just don't. They have some good weapons, but it's just it's it's not anything that scares me. And if I'm wrong, listen, I'm back on this show, or I will record something so hey. that way you guys can put me on blast next Monday. <laughs> wait, wait, we ain't holding you to that. But <laughs> I look. So you have to. Uh, you- happened or still everybody in the comments you might not listen to me at all spence i know how you are sometimes um hey. i'm just playing <laughs> i'm just playing listen when i got to buffalo they had just gone to two super bowls and we're going out and playing teams and all i heard in the locker room was every week for 16 weeks super bowl week and i kept i was like what are they talking about i was like it's not the super bowl and they would go it's their super bowl they think mm-hmm. it's the Super Bowl. They're playing us. They're going to play. You watch it on film. They will play better against us than they will against the other teams. And I'll be damned if the game doesn't step up. When you're in front and you got the target on you, they're coming. And they're jacked up because everybody, 
everybody wants to be on ESPN, you know, sacking Josh Allen or tackling Singletary for a loss or ripping a 35-yard run. And, you know, maybe some of the pieces are are challenged right now, but the attitude and the mentality of being the, the giant killer, that's a pretty strong emotion. So I, I always temper it, man. I always temper it. Okay, I'll take care. I mean, obviously, you, you played the sport professionally, so I can't I can't challenge that, and I wouldn't. Um, and and we, like I said, last season, we, we, we lost to the Jaguars in the same fashion where I'm sitting here saying, no, we're going to do – I actually did a podcast the night before. That was when the Buffalo Bill – that's when Buffalo Rumblings, we released our first beer. So that was the first round of it. And we did the live Megapod, and I'm on there, and I'm talking big stuff, man. I'm like, oh, we're going to destroy the Jaguars. They ain't got nothing for the Bills. And then they, we come out and lay a goose egg. We, we lose the game 9-6. to six. So, you know, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably right. It might be a little bit more competitive than I'm giving them credit for. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the Buffalo Bills cover, man. I think that 12-and-a-half is probably being too nice to the Jets. Like, I, honestly, I think their record – is a lot better than the team they actually are. And and that's saying something. Yeah. Well, no, I, I look, I don't, anything is possible. Right. But I, I just never, I just never want to discount the, the, the fortitude and the desire of these pros, man. I mean, I've been on that team that was three and 13. I've been on that team that was six and 10 and mm-hmm. there it's just emotionally devastating when you got to look in the mirror and say, man, we suck. And yeah. you just got to get amped up to go back out there. And, then, you know, so if everybody's amped up at the right time, sometimes good things happen. And, you know, you got to make sure that your guys are on point. So that, I, and again, going back, I, I know we won the game and it, I don't think it was awful, but there were things like we were talking about the work they're going to look at that run game and they're going to say, all right, well, were we out of position? That's the number one thing. Did we line up like the defense was called? Yes, no, maybe. I saw mm-hmm. on those tosses that we were lined up in an outflanked position already. We were playing some inside techniques. And if that's the design of the defense, that's fine. But you got to know that the other guys are smart enough. They got people upstairs too. And I don't mean our Lord and Savior who can look down and look at alignments and start mixing it up a little bit. So we got to make sure we're ready for a blend of a running attack. I don't think that with um, Ed Oliver, Jordan Phillips, Daquan Jones, and Tim Settle in the middle, that that's a very appetizing place to run. Right. But with younger guys on the edges, that's a little bit more appetizing. And, tr- of course, Tremaine and Milano behind you know, the defensive line. Who, by the way, man, Milano is just killing it, killing Ooh. it. He's having a he's having an all pro season, and he is. And look, I'm I'm not going to challenge you a little bit, but I'm going to ask you to go back and maybe look at the film a little because I'm like you. I'm an advocate for Tremaine Edmonds, mm-hmm. and I think the things that he does are not measurable all the time. But one thing I do want to see him do is not collect anymore. I want to see him deliver. So in space sometimes, and you don't always do it, okay? There's sometimes when you got to break down, but when you have the sideline as leverage and you got another player there or you have the proper angle, I want to see him I want to see him delivering more rather than wrapping and and taking him down. Now, that's just an observation. So Yeah, no, I'll agree with that. So when I when I look when I talk about Tremaine and I debate with people about, you know, his worth for the team and how, you know, what he's done and what he's doing, I don't I don't debate those things. Like if there's certain things there are to improve on. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but my thing is so like for instance yesterday we got gashed by the run. It was the entire defense. It wasn't Tremaine. Totally and agree. So what happens is people will come out and only focus on Tremaine Edmonds not being good in the run and it's like wait a minute. Von Miller wasn't good at defending the run yesterday. Tim Settle wasn't good at defending the run yesterday. Like so there are 11 guys on that defense. And we single out Shane, and then we ignore the good things that he does. So I just try to defend him for he's having the best, the best season yeah, of his no, career. I, I don't disagree with you. And in a lot of those instances, you know, what I'm saying is a little ticky tack because I, I always measure, and, and I don't know if he, they do it on the field because I never did, I never played defense. But if a guy's already got the first down, you know, you can put a hit on him or you can be a little bit more secure in the tackle. 
all right? Because mm-hmm. you go flying, you miss, and then it's not just a first down, it's another seven. I don't know what's mm-hmm. going through his mind, but I, I'd, I'd like to see him a little bit more physical in that way. But I'm an, I'm, I'm an advocate. I like him. I think he's having a terrific year. I, I, I mean, everybody on that defense, which brings us to another reason you may want to sign that before the trade deadline is whether you like it or not, Tredavious White is still a question mark. I mean, yeah. we we all hope and believe, but that's a different deal, man. The speed of the game, as opposed to the speed of practice, the training room or the weight room, um, you know, it's all got to hold up. It's all got to work right. And I think the, the odds are in his favor, you know, but that's still in the back of your mind about do we sign another secondary guy? Yeah, and and especially again with with the injuries that that are happening around, not just Trey anymore, but like I said, Jordan may miss time. We don't know for sure. We're waiting on the MRI mm-hmm. results, but he may miss time. Mike is out for the year. We saw it last night as soon as Jordan went out, there was a deep ball that went over the heads of of our safeties, scored a touchdown, and it it was almost like it was almost like Rodgers was waiting for hey, if Jordan's gonna take a break, let me, that's when I'm gonna go deep. And unfortunately, he he was injured and, and stepped out. But but that's how it happened. So I'm just I'm just hopefully, like you said, I I, I don't need a running. Back. I know we've been linked to him. I don't need a running back. I need to make sure we shore up that back end. I don't want I don't want teams who um I, I don't want any type of confidence when you go against our defense. I want y'all to go in there and be afraid to throw that thing around. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, but to finish up on on the game here. Um, so as far as expectations. What do you think the game plan for the Bills are going to be going into a game, a, a team like the Jets? Uh, you know, it might sound kind of cliche, but I, I think they they kind of lather, rinse, repeat what they did last night. I think okay. they, I think when you feel like your running game is clicking a little bit, you really got to stay with it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there's confusion in the locker room, like, well, we ran the ball really well last week. Like, where did it go? Now, game circumstances can change what you do, you know, series to series. If it's a close game or if you're way behind, you're not going to be running, you know, inside zone. It's just not going to happen. But I think it's going to be uh, – I think it's going to be not dissimilar. We're going to see a lot of those intermediate routes, and then we're going to take a shot. And I got to be honest, man, the, the, the freaking balls that Josh is throwing on the nine routes that are hitting the guys two yards deep in the end zone, like it happened in Kansas City, like it happened last night. Uh, those, I mean, that's a thing of beauty. Yeah. It, it's incredible. But I, I think we're going to do that. We're going to bring them up front a little bit. We ran a lot of play action last night. We tried to freeze those linebackers. We put a few passes in kind of short range. We had a few drops yesterday. No one's, I don't know who's talking about that, but we had, I think, three drops. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was shaking my head. Uh, we eliminate those drops from last night. The game, I think, looks looks very different. We eliminate them against the Jets. We bring them in tight with the running game and the play action, and I think we'll see we'll see stretching of the field just a little bit more than we did last night. And, yeah, and uh, oh. I expect a win. I absolutely expect to win. But just to piggyback off of what you're saying, we had some drops, but we also had some overthrows. I was a little shocked mm-hmm. with what I saw out of Josh. Like, it's so far for this season, you know, it seems like just been on point. You know, I, th- I feel like he's been protecting the ball better. I feel like he's been making really good decisions. Yesterday, he, he made a couple bad ones in the, in, in the second half there that just was uncharacteristic of what we've known from Josh Allen this mm-hmm. year. And, you know, like you said, clean that up. Now, I'm saying this, and I feel like now I kind of hate the fact that we're having this conversation in a way, because now I sound like a negative Nancy when we're going. No, to you don't. One, you know, but you said I don't. No, you can't. Look, you can't be all sunshine and roses every day. But the best part about it was the guy owned it. I mean, uh, yeah. I listened to the wrap up. You know, Vaughn was talking and Josh was talking. Uh, I can't remember who else I listened to, but I, when you got a guy that absolutely owns it and you can hear the emotion in his voice yeah that's a good thing and yeah. and i think this idea i mean look josh is not iron man right he's not the black panther he's not going to win every battle every throw and they call if this is the slump if it's one half slump or you know part of a game slump 
hey, I'm in for it. <laughs> you know, if yeah. that makes him hungrier and meaner and ready, then I'm here for it. <laughs> I was I was looking at the schedule, and then we can we can uh, get ready to get on out of here soon. But I was looking at the schedule. I feel like at this point, like we we went through the tough part of the schedule. So it's like in a way before the season, when you saw the schedule, the games that we just went through, some people would have said, oh, mate, if we get four and two going into the bye, I'm happy. Three and three into the bye, I'm happy. And at this point, going to face the Jets now, you know, we're we're at the top of the AFC. We're at the top of the AFC East. And now you have a lot of games coming up where teams are either just at 500 or a little below. The Jets are not. Obviously, they're, they have a pretty decent record so far. But going forward, it's one of those things where it feels like if we're focused every week, we should really, really end this season with a very good record and a strong chance to lock up that number one seed for the AFC. Yeah. Um, how do you just, you know, before we get out of here, give me your thoughts on that. Like, how do you see ourselves positioning ourselves for that number one seed for the end of the season? No, I, I read it the same way you do. I mean, I think the schedule, you know, you got to, you got to start by looking at the schedule and you got to take it for what it says. You know, you can read it, but it reads right back to you. And mm -hmm. we are in a position to dominate and put ourselves at that one seat. I mean, on paper, it's doable. On paper, it's doable to finish with, you know, two or less losses. It's, it's just the odds don't say it like, you know, there's there's just right, so right. few perfect seasons, right? We don't have a perfect season, but beyond that, you know, looking at the schedule just on its face value, you know, we got a chance to get that one seed. We got a very, very good chance at that one seed. And if if we get that, bro, I'll I'll be I'll be shacking up on your couch hey, in uh, in February. <laughs> come through. I got space for you, man. I already got yeah. space. So um before we get out of here, I do have to have a shameless plug. Uh, tomorrow night, if if you all are free, I have a big show. Um, I have former NFL player, uh, foreign, former cornerback and return specialist Adam Pacman Jones joining me. We're going to be talking about the game that's on right now, the the you know the the Browns and the Bengals. But I also want to talk to him specifically about what John and I spent a good part of this show talking about the backfield. Jordan Poyer might miss time. Uh, Trey White might still be a question mark like john mentioned we're going to talk about it from a nfl cornerbacks perspective so if you have time tomorrow 8 p.m eastern time please join me on the buffalo rumblings vidcast network and uh that, that's my only shameless plug i appreciate it john do you well, have anything I'll, you want to say before we get on out of here yeah i'll uh, i'll do my shameless plug uh hi mimi my awesome daughter mimi, mimi fina she's a regular on the show so nice Over. to see you honey and we miss you can't wait to see you at thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, that's my plug. My daughter is awesome. So, so yeah, awesome. hey, and, and so is Bill's Mafia. Um, you know, I always sound like a, too much of a cheerleader, I think. You know, I'm not too edgy or mean or anything like that. But I, I feel like we need more more love and kindness in the world. And, I, I like, I get a dose of it. I come here, and I get a great dose of it. Hi, honey. So... <laughs> Um, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Really appreciate it. From the Market Dominator to House Capital to Q42 Barbecue Sauce and Spence, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for jumping in for Joe. You're amazing. Uh, I wish I had more time to listen to you more. When uh, JV football is over, I'll, I promise I'll do better. Forgive me in advance, please. And okay. um, yeah, man, that's it for me. I, I love this team. I love this community. And uh, wow. Oh, I, I will tell you this real quick. So I said to McDermott, I have my AFC championship ring on me, and I pulled it out, and I said, hey, man, do me a favor. And I, I showed it to him, and I said, don't get one of these. And he's like, you don't want me to get a championship ring? I said, yeah, man, I want you to get one, but I want yours to say NFL champion or world champion, not AFC champion. So do that for me. Get that Super Bowl ring. I'm wishing. Get that damn Super you know Bowl ring. I mean – Every year, I feel like every team obviously feels like they can do it. But, I mean, really, is there a better chance that you can – you know, like, what? this is the year, man. Do it. It really is. It really is. So, the right ladies people. and gentlemen, I appreciate you all uh, allowing me to spend time with you and, and the great, the legend John Fina here tonight. Um, we're going to get on out of here. 
Everybody enjoy the rest of their Halloween. Go trick or treat and be safe. Take care of your kids and make sure you check the candy. Okay, check candy. And y'all know how I do it over here at Buffalo Rumblers, man. Y'all take care of each other, love each other, and live in peace. And as always, stay positive. Test negative. Go Bills. Go Bills.